Hey guys, it's Austin here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this tea box. Let's get building. I started out by milling some of the lumber that I had selected for the box. This is a piece of spalted sycamore I had recently picked up from a local lumber yard. It has some really cool blue, kind of gray tones throughout it. The other parts of the box will be made out of a local cherry I also picked up from the same lumber yard. After milling down the wood to right around 5 eighths of an inch, I brought it over to my table saw and utilized my miter slot I had just finished making to make some nice repeatable mitered 45 degree angle cuts to form the body of the tea box. Looks like the mitered corners turned out great. Now on to cut some ray baits or rabbits to house the bottom piece and the lid. By the way, don't mind the fumbling. Apparently I don't know how to put my own crosscut sled onto my table saw. Here I'm just using my crosscut sled to cut the rabbits to house those pieces. And now I'm just moving on to cut a quick dado or just trench cut into the center of the two longer sides in order to house a divider which will create two compartments within the tea box. Now I just need to clean it up a little bit with a chisel and some sandpaper in order to kind of minimize the amount of work I'll need to do once the box is finally glued up. And then I will be able to glue the piece all together. I think this view really gives you a good uh, opportunity to appreciate the grain in this wood. I've never really seen a spalted sycamore like this before and it just has a really cool kind of wave pattern that I'm going to utilize to make a continuous wrap around the actual tee box. And so here I'm just using a plane, uh, the flat surface of the plane to uh, push the two pieces against in order to tape them up flush. This will minimize a little bit of sanding or kind of finish work I'll need to do when the box is all glued together. I ended up putting a small separator piece in the data slot uh, just for glue up purposes. I haven't actually cut the true separator at this point. This was just a small cutoff I had. In hindsight, I don't necessarily think I needed this piece, especially because I ended up throwing on a strap clamp as well as a couple quick clamps off camera. But I don't think it hurt either, so I'm okay with it. Once I let that glue up overnight, I started to work on the lid of the box. Here is a piece of cherry with 
uh, some really nice tones as well as kind of this gray black lacing pattern. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but uh, really cool. You'll get to see it later. And I'm just getting this sized up as well as another piece of spalted sycamore that I'll be using as the bottom of the box. After I had finished the cuts on my crosscut sled, I took my block plane to the lid as well as the bottom piece in order to get just a really snug fit. As well, I had a piece of stick-on sandpaper that I had placed on a uh, leftover piece of plywood just to kind of get those last couple millimeters in order to get a true fit to these pieces. I'm just showing off a proud bottom piece and that's just to create a kind of illusion when I put the legs on it at the end uh, as if the box is kind of floating or has a separation between the two pieces. You'll see soon. Here I'm just taking a cut off from the lid to make a few different pieces for the eventual uh, final form of this tea box, including the uh, separator to create those two compartments. Uh, that'll fit really nicely into that dado slot that I had created earlier, as well as the feet of the box and a couple small holders for the handle. Can you tell I love my crosscut sled as well as my jigs for my table saw? I don't think I could merely make this box safely and as you can see I kind of had like a little mix up there but everything turned out okay. Here I'm just cutting the legs of the box to the final width. Here I'm just taking some of the cutoffs from the body of the box when I created the mitered corners and I used them to create a lid handle, uh, kind of like this geometric shape. Not really sure what I was going with, but I, I really like the way it turned out and so it, it ties in really nicely with the wrap around the box, the grain. Now for just a little bit of touch up, some sanding on the inside, and I can finally get to gluing everything together. I really took my time for each individual piece of this box from the legs to the bottom part to the handle uh, and this was just to make sure I had a really accurate glue up. Uh, I really wanted everything to come out as close to perfect as possible. Sorry by the way for the Type 1 bottle, that was an accident and they are not a sponsor of this video. Yes, I know that one of the triangles holding the box lid on was missing in that video. I put it on later. It was just not sticking for some reason, so I ended up using some super glue 
uh, just off camera to get it to stick. Shout out to Walrus Oil. Uh, their furniture finish is an awesome product. They aren't sponsoring this video either, but I just absolutely love their finishes. I use their uh, cutting board oil on all of my cutting boards and their furniture finish on uh, a lot of the pieces of furniture as well as small builds. Uh, it's an all natural and I believe vegan product uh, that just really brings out the natural tones of the wood and as you can see it's just really highlighting the blue and gray tones in this spalted sycamore as well as that cherry hue in the lid and feet. And now to enjoy some nice hot tea. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel to see more of my small as well as large scale builds. Feel free as well to follow me on Instagram to learn more about me and to see the most current build I'm working on. Thanks again.